e.g. Marshall, a well-known actor on stage and screen, had a big impact on the entertainment world. Did you first see him in a movie or on TV? Share your stories below. We'll explore some interesting facts about his life. Stay tuned to learn more about this classic actor. Your memories and experiences are welcome. Keep watching for more insights into E.G. Marshall's life and career. Born on June 18 in Owatonna, Minnesota, Marshall's early life was marked by modest beginnings. His family's support and encouragement were evident in his pursuit of education, graduating from Carleton College in 1931. The Great Depression, a defining era, played a crucial role in shaping his resilience and determination. His journey into acting began in the theater scene, notably with the American Repertory Theater. The experiences garnered there laid a sturdy foundation for his future in the performing arts. The subsequent years saw him involved in radio productions, gradually making a transition to Broadway. These early years honed his craft and solidified his commitment to the art of acting. World War II intervened, redirecting his path as he served in the Army Air Forces. This period, though challenging, instilled discipline and fortitude, qualities that would continue to define his later career. Post-war, he resumed his acting pursuits, venturing into television and film. His distinctive voice and commanding presence earned recognition, and he became a familiar face on both the big and small screens. Notably, his role in the film 12 Angry Men showcased his talent and contributed to the movie's success. A pivotal moment in his career came with involvement in the American Shakespeare Festival Theater. This marked a return to his theatrical roots, reaffirming his love for the stage. His diverse role showcased not only his acting skills, but also his adaptability across different mediums. As he navigated the entertainment industry, he became a respected figure known for professionalism and dedication. His illustrious career spanned decades, leaving a lasting impact on American entertainment. His contributions, shaped by early experiences and the challenges he overcame, solidified his status as a revered actor. He always kept his initials, e.g., a secret. In The Scarlet Hour, he played Lieutenant Jennings alongside Tom Tryon, who acted as E.V. Marshall. Interestingly, Tryon starred with Marshall in the same movie. He had daughters from his second marriage and sons, Sam and Jid, along with a daughter named Sarah from his third marriage. Throughout his career, he maintained a mystery around himself, captivating fans and colleagues alike. His mysterious vibe extended beyond the screen, adding depth to his performances and keeping audiences interested. In interviews, he often avoided questions about his initials, preferring to focus on his work. Despite his quiet nature, those close to him spoke of his warmth and humor, showing glimpses of the person behind the actor. His influence lives on not only through his memorable roles, but also through the mystery surrounding his personal life, leaving a lasting impression on Hollywood history. This text was in the Kane Mutiny, e.g. Marshall played Lieutenant Conger, Challey. In a crucial court martial scene, he, as the prosecutor, questions in sin Willis Seward Keith, played by Robert Francis. The question revolves around Keith's role as the officer of the deck on the DMS Kane on the morning of July 31. Unfortunately, on that very date in 1955, actor Robert Francis met a tragic end while piloting a borrowed airplane in Burbank, California. He showcased his skills not only in the Kane Mutiny, but also in another film titled Town Without Pity, released in 1961. In the movie Nixon, he portrayed John Mitchell. Richard Nixon, who served as vice president under Dwight D. Eisenhower, was depicted by him in two other productions, namely Ike and War and Remembrance. His versatility as an actor is evident in his portrayal of various characters, including a military prosecutor in two different films and his depiction of Dwight D. Eisenhower in two separate productions. The actor's ability to take on diverse roles adds depth to his body of work. In Superman Roman II, Marshall took on the role of the president, a character initially considered for Henry Fonda. However, he secured the prestigious role due to his compelling performance in 12 Angry Men. Moving beyond that, Marshall starred in Compulsion, playing the character of District Attorney Harold Horn. Alongside him, Gavin McLeod, known for his roles in The Mary Tyler Moore Show and The Love Boat, joined Marshall as a crucial member of the legal team. Throughout his career, Marshall formed meaningful connections with fellow actors such as Robert Reed, William Daniels, Angie Dickinson, William Shatner, and Doris Roberts. These friendships enriched Marshall's personal life and showcased his extensive network within the entertainment industry. 
It is through these connections that Marshall's broad influence in the world of acting becomes evident. The relationships he built with his peers attest to the lasting impact of a talented artist. In Hollywood, where collaborations and alliances are pivotal, Marshall's ability to cultivate and maintain such camaraderie speaks volumes about his affable nature and professional standing. Reflecting on his role in shaping the cinematic landscape, it becomes clear that Marshall was not only a talented actor, but also a beloved figure whose influence extended far beyond the characters portrayed on screen. In one of his final interviews in 1997, e.g., Marshall revealed that he was actually born in 1914, not in 1910 as many sources had previously stated. Despite often being cast in serious and business-like roles, he was known among his colleagues for his mischievous sense of humor. While shooting The Bold Ones, The New Doctors in 1969, he would improvise profane jokes and non-sequiturs behind his surgical mask, surprising his co-stars. He hinted that his initials might represent Etta Gunnar or Enigma Gregarious. This playful ambiguity added to his enigmatic persona, leaving fans guessing about the true meaning behind his initials. His career spanned decades, and his ability to balance seriousness with humor made him a beloved figure both on and off screen. In 12 Angry Men, he gave a really good performance as Juror 4, showing how great of an actor he was. He also acted alongside Joseph Sweeney in the original 1953 Broadway production of The Crucible, which was a big deal in theater. He was also on the radio, hosting the CBS Radio Mystery Theater, where he told spooky stories and people loved his voice. He was also in Creepshow, playing Upson Pratt, which added some excitement to the scary stories. In absolute power, he acted with Ed Harris, and they worked well together, making the movie really memorable. They kept working together in more movies, showing they made a good team. He did a lot of different things in his career, like acting on stage, radio, and in movies. He left a big mark on the entertainment world that shows how great he was. This was after starting his acting career in 1933, he decided to change his name to E.G. Marshall. He's most known for being the host and narrator for the CBS Radio Mystery Theater from 1974 to 1981. Surprisingly, he only acted in one episode, playing Ebenezer Scrooge in A Christmas Carol during the 1975 season. This performance became a yearly tradition, airing repeatedly every Christmas. His portrayal of Scrooge was loved by listeners and became a special part of the show's history. The combination of his narration and his rare on-air performance continues to be celebrated. It shows how talented he was. It was in the movie My Chauffeur, he played the role of Witherspoon, putting in three days for his performance. Even though it was short, he left a mark with how he acted. Throughout his career, he played various historical figures on screen. In Lincoln, he was U.S. Secretary of the Navy Gideon Wells. He also portrayed President Ulysses S. Grant in Emma Queen of the South Seas, U.S. Attorney General John Mitchell in Nixon, Ambassador Joseph P. Kennedy in Kennedy, and Secretary of State John Foster Dulles in Eleanor, First Lady of the World. Additionally, he played General George Washington and Revolutionary Samuel Adams on You Are There. In Superman Roman II, he played the President, a role that was also considered for Douglas Fairbanks Jr., but he got the part showing his ability to adapt to different roles. His acting in My Chauffeur, his portrayal of historical figures, and his role as the president in Superman II highlight his versatility as an actor.